everybody. Welcome back to part two of the mini paper bag journal. Before we get started, I want to say a big welcome to Betsy, Bonnie, Bonnie, Carla, Cheryl, Christine, Gail, Isabel, Julia, Karen, Catherine, Leslie, Margie, Maureen, Rox, Star, Sandra, Shirley, Stacy, and Sue. Thank you guys so, so much uh, for your support. Okay, let's jump on in and get started with our next step on this. I thought this would be really nice before we sew this in to put a couple of flips on the inside and the back uh, inside of the back front and back cover. Um, actually I am going to leave that because I want to get that sewn in first so let's just carry on with the pages. Okay um, I don't do, tend to do a lot of embellishing before I sew in because it gets very difficult um, to manage the signature if you've got a lot of stuff. But having said that, um, I do all my stitching beforehand. And then if there's like a fabric pocket going into it, I will go ahead and stitch that um, Sometimes I glue in a fabric pocket um, just because if it's in a circumstance where I don't want to see the stitching on the back. Um, but for this journal, I'm going to go ahead, I want to stitch this invoice pocket. And then I'm going to just run some decorative stitching along these plain pages. So let me do that, and then we will get this sewn in and see what we can achieve in this segment. Um, so I will be right back. Okay, guys, um, I have went ahead and just did some stitching on a couple pages. Here I just stitched that so that I could create a pocket there, and then a bit more stitching there. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and get this sewn in and this part I really hope you can see. If not, I would recommend um, if you if you if you're new to journaling and you're not sure about the five hole pamphlet stitch, I don't know how well I can I can make you guys see it. Um, but I know there's a couple of folks on YouTube that um, that have some great videos and it's very clear to see. So the first thing I do, this is just like an essential. This is a Tim Holtz ruler. Love this ruler. Um, I know there's some other, I think like drafting rulers out there. I've seen ladies use them, but I love this one. Just get that lined up center. And then for this one, I'm going to um, just make a little mark at the center, the one, and the two, because I want that to uh, hold everything securely in place. And at this point, I'm going to grab the cover because I'm going to punch this at the same time. That way it's all lined up. Um, if you have a really thick signature block, Sometimes I will punch the signature papers first and then line it up on there and do it uh, separately um, because it can tend to shift if you're dealing with a really bulky signature block. But for this one, you can see it's we're still pretty thin. Um, oh, let me grab my stuff. Oh, gosh, I'm so unprepared today. It's been such a long time since I've done a um, journal tutorial that 
I feel like I'm just kind of all over the place at the moment because uh, it's just, I've been working, you know, just a little quick, short things. You know, I try to condense things down so I'm not taking up too much of your time. Um, so this is, this is just a completely different process. It's been, gosh, I can't even remember the last video I did on uh, creating a journal start to finish. So, let me just go ahead and get my needle. This is Irish linen thread. This, that's what I use. Um, you can use like a poultry thread. Um, I think the crochet thread will work. But this is what I, I, I really like it. I don't wax mine. You can wax it, but I'm not a fan of the wax. I've got to be honest. I started off with that and I would say if you're starting off journal making I would recommend the waxed because it it won't slip through as easily as something that's un and unwaxed and when you're first starting it's very easy to to lose that end you know your tail and uh, I, I do think it's the best way to start with the, the sewing so I hope you can, let me see if I can zoom you guys in slightly, sorry. So you can see I've got it marked and I just want to make sure that that is where I want it to come through on the, on the journal spine. And I put the first all in the center and then that will hold that in place if you just leave that and then come along and punch through those others. And don't worry about going all the way through at this point because right now you just want to make sure you've got a mark that you can uh, push that on through here in just a second. I'll show you. So now I can take that out and now I'm going to push that all the way through so I've got a nice size hole and my needle will go through with no problems. In fact, let me use that one. That's a slightly, this one's just a slightly better. And so it's surprising. This is pretty bulky and I'm not too sure why. Usually it's uh, with this few of pages, it goes right through. So now you can see how that looks. So let's just start in the center, push that through, okay? Now at this point, pull it on through and, and leave enough. I try to leave enough in case I want to attach a little bead or something in the center and put your thumb over that and hold that. Then you're going to go to the next hole come up and now through the third one now this is where it's starting to shift a little bit and that's where pull that snug okay got it and now it's through so you can see through the third one. Come back. Just make sure you hang on to that tail. And then on this side you're going to come back through that second hole making sure you do not pierce that thread because if you see that your, com your needle's coming up through that thread, pull it back out. Do not let that happen because when you go to try to snug this up it's not going to want to snug up. So that is the, probably the most important thing is do not pierce your thread. If you do, your best just to go ahead and pull it out if you can, and if not, you need to just start over. Okay, so I've come back through. Now, instead of going through the center, you're going to jump over to the um, second hole on this side, which is my, you know, the right. And it doesn't matter if you start 
working on the left or if you start on the right, it's the same process. It's just for me, I tend to do it this way. And again, now you're coming through the third hole or the, or the first, <laughs> however you want to count it. And at this point, I'm going to just, I can let that go because it's held in place pretty good. But So now, <clears throat> back up through, pull that snug, come back through that hole, and you might have to fiddle, you know, whittle, wiggle it around a little bit just to, to get it through. Pull it snug, and now you can see we're now going to come through that center and just be really careful that you don't pierce that. Now when you bring that up, can you see the needle? You want it to come on the other side of the thread. Don't have them both on the same side because this is how you're going to tie it off and that will keep it secure. Okay? Alright, so there we go. Now the other thing I do is I grab these and I now look and make sure that's nice and snug, and it is. Then I come over here, and I've still got my fingers on those, and now just want to make sure all of these are, are snugged up. So let me pull that. And yeah, that went a little bit wonky there, I can see. But, but that shows you it's nice and, and tight. So I always do that before I tie it off. And then just tie it with that going over and then come through and tie it that way. There you go. So now I'm going to just snip a little bit of this off because I might want to add some kind of dangle. I'm sure I will because I, I generally... Most of the time, I always do. If you don't want to see these strings, what you can do is snip it down, but don't snip that knot. Um, just snip it just before, and at that point, that's when it probably would be better. If you don't like the string showing, you probably would want to wax your thread because then you can press the wax down and make that completely flat. So I hope that's explained that. Okay. So we've got those in there. At this point, I'm just going to clip that off, and we're going to work on our flip now. Let me get my uh, things put away here. I need to get some air in the in the studio. It's getting a little bit muggy today. Okay, so let me grab my piece of paper. <laughs> this is the other thing I do. I get I get this paper really cheap at the car boots, um, so I just use it as like to protect my surface. But the other good thing about this is this is where I jot down stuff, and you'll see, look, I doodle, I write things, I put, I do my, you know, figures, all sorts of things, um, because that's how my brain seems to be working these days. I never used to have trouble with focus, but uh, I think it's all of this, um, you know, the social media that it just, I don't know, I really do have trouble with focus now. So having said that, I, I, when I measure stuff, I have to jot it down so I can look back over from my um, cut paper cutter. Otherwise, I will forget it from the time I go from here to there. <laughs> it's sad, I know, really. All right, so I'm going to make it about, I know three and a quarter is, is going to be the widest. I'm going to want to do that. And uh, probably about four and, four and a half. So I just write it. Write it down there, and I know, and let me just check the back and make sure that's going to be about the same. Three, two, five, yeah, that's, I, it was more the width. I knew the height would be the same, but I just wanted to make sure that the width, because if you don't get that, you know, center, this might have been shorter or whatever. Um, okay, 
So I think what I wanted to do with this is a little flip out with a window pocket and then we can have another pocket there and I probably similar sort of thing here maybe not a window back here I don't know we're just gonna gonna go along and see what we end up with so at this point let me just lift this up slightly all right let me see paper wise let me get some cardstock So, all right, so I know that's three and a quarter, but I want to allow an inch for the hinge. So I'm going to go four and a quarter by four and a half. So let me just go ahead and go to four and a half. By four and a quarter. And then I'm going to go ahead and score that at three and a quarter okay sit that over there and then just yep that's fine so now what I think I'm gonna do is I will cut a window out, then we're going to emboss it. Okay, let's see if I can do all this on the camera, guys. This is my Big Shot, if you're not familiar. This is a die cutting machine. I highly, highly recommend this. Um, it's just got so many uses, and you will see. And then I've got the magnetic plate, which does make life a little bit easier. My cutting plates, oh gosh, I must order some. They are getting in sad, sad shape. <laughs> all right, and so let me dig out my, this is where I keep all my dies, guys. Uh, somebody uh, recommended that you get, these are fishing tackle um, bags that you can pick up. I bought this at Walmart. I have looked in the UK. I can't find anything in the UK similar to this. Um, I've checked Amazon. So when I go back, I'm going to buy myself another one. I love this for storing. It's just such an awesome way to be able to see stuff. And when I travel, I can take it with me. Yes, I'm sad. I'm, I take my crafting stuff with me when I travel. <laughs> Well, the reason I do that, if you are new, let me get my little, yeah, that's as big as I'm going to go on that. And you know what? Just for kicks, let's do something different. Let's do an oval. I've been doing the squares a lot. Let's just try, I think we're going to do that. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to cut this and then we're going to emboss it. Let me go ahead and grab my embossing folder so we can just get on with this. This is why I know it's going to take ages to do this. Because I do struggle to, to, to craft and talk. So, so I'm sorry guys, this is going to be a very long, drawn out process. Alright, first I want to cut that out and then I always save my little cutouts and I'll show you guys this is my little basket anything little die cuts and stuff I just chuck them in there and then when I'm when I'm finishing off a journal um, I could just pull from that and do something on it if I want to Okay, put that away because if I don't, I will never find it. Oops, sorry about bumping that, guys. Okay, now I have to change platforms for the embossing. 
and again if you are new to this and don't know what I'm talking about this multi-purpose platform will come with the Big Shot everybody will have this the magnetic one is a, a separate purchase um, and you will it will give you instructions on here on how to do it but for the embossing folder you, ha you have it on tab one so this this is tab two this is tab one and then that's the base of it so you would put this through um, put your cutting plate and then this is what I'm talking about with the embossing folder um, I'm going to use this pattern and I'm just going to, I don't want that hinge because that's what's going to be glued down. I don't want that embossed just because it'll make it weaker and um, it'll be more difficult to glue that down. So. so now you've sandwiched that between the two cutting plates and you crank it through. This is what you end up with. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love all that extra texture. I just love it. Okay, let me set this to the side now, guys. Okay, so now what I'm going to need to do is cut a back to this. And again, there's my figure. Um, so that's three and a quarter. Just want to make sure. Uh, and there, <laughs> you're thinking, well, why is she measuring that again? Because sometimes when you emboss paper, it will. Um, change the, sh the, the size just ever so slightly and uh, it's because I don't know it's doing something to those fibers so that's why I wanted to make sure that that's going to be fine and it is. Okay so at this point let's go ahead and get our window cut and put in there. This is um, the cake oh my gosh cake wrapper acetate oh gosh uh, hmm, I can't remember it again I just did a tutorial on this and somebody told me I can't remember but this stuff's amazing because it's thinner than some of the acetate you can get it's really thick I love this so um, if you don't know what I'm talking about leave me a comment and I will look that up for you. Um, you can get this on Amazon and probably eBay. And if you're in a very um, big town that has cake decor decorating supplies, you could probably get it there. Okay, so here we go. Let's just cut that. My nails look terrible. I've been doing tea dyeing and uh, that that dye really sticks with it. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm telling to myself. So I was really bored one day, right? And I thought, oh gosh, I'd love to have a French manicure, but I've quit having my nails done because it was wrecking my nails. So <laughs> I grabbed this. Um, you know these markers, the white one, and I did my nails. And actually they're not too bad. I mean they're looking pretty rough today because um, I've been using the, when you use the Fabri-Tac, that will take your nail polish off. But I was just so bored and I thought, oh I wonder if that would work as a French manicure. And sure enough it did. I just, um, I need those guides to do it. But there's, there's another free tip for you. <laughs> during lockdown and you want a French manicure <laughs> you'd be amazed what we can get up to in our space but um, 
But yeah, I'm going to have to take it off and redo it. They are looking pretty bad today. <laughs> but they did look really good the first day. Oh, goodness. Oops, my needle here. <clears throat> okay, so anyways, what I was going to tell you about the um, carrying my supplies around. If you are... Um, if you, if you haven't been following me and listening to me over the last few years, um, then you wouldn't know that I have to go home. Well, I don't have to. I want to go home um, to see my family as often as I can afford. Um, and so when I do that, because the flight is so expensive, I try to... Um, stay an extended period, you know, like three to four or five weeks, depends on how long I can afford to stay gone. Um, and so when I do that, that's why I carry stuff with me, because um, I stay with my dad, and then my son, I go up and stay with him, and of course, you know, my kids have got jobs and lives, so I'm left. Um, you know, they take off time, obviously, but they can't just stay around and babysit mom. So, I tend to take things so I have something to do, particularly at my dad's, because my dad's got dementia and uh, wowzer. You know, they... <sighs> They'll tell you, oh my gosh, I nearly closed that off. This is why i got to be totally focused. Um, yeah, you'll hear the stories. Sometimes it's like 15 times in a 5 or 10 minute span. <laughs> and, you know, when you're cooped up with somebody like that for weeks, it starts to wear on you, so I just I start taking my stuff, and then I can listen to his stories all day long, and I'm I'm focused on what I'm doing. <laughs> just uh, yeah, 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 Dad. <laughs> but um, for the most part, he's he's not too bad, not too bad. <clears throat> okay, so that that's why I tend to take a few things with me. For my sanity. All right, I'm glad I didn't glue that shut because that's where our little tag's going to go through. But I like the oval shape. And let's just go ahead. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and ink this up, guys, and then I'm going to have to stop the camera and um, come back because I I can't believe how long this is uh, this has been going. And you see, when you distress that, that really pulls that um, embossed image out. Okay, guys, I will be back in just a moment. Okay, guys, uh, yeah, I can see there's a glare. That's that the acetate there. So let's just go ahead and get that glued down. And, <clears throat> and we will get going with this. Okay, just gonna put that over there near where the stitching is. Okay, now I've had a thought because I don't like these, you know, f flapping open when when you are opening a journal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put that down so that that's on a brad and that'll swivel. Make sure if I do that, that way you can still have to pull it out. But that's okay. I'm going to do that. So um, I got these two tiny little tags, but what I'm going to do is glue those together just so it's just a little bit sturdier because that's going to take a lot of um, 
well, I want it strong enough to hold because that's double, and when you get the tag in there, that's going to be pretty heavy. So now the other thing is I don't want to punch a brad through because it would show on this side, so I'm going to have to put that on just a little piece of paper. And let me see what I can come up with. It'd be nice if I can find something that blends in with that. This is just a little bit of scrap, but I don't mind that it's not <coughs> the same. If I had some more of that left over, but I think I used it all, so I'm just going to take a very small piece of this. through the paper and then I'm going to glue the paper to that in case you were wondering what I'm doing. Just make sure. Go there. So I've got to get it right against that. Okay, I think that's going to work. Let me get this glued. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yep, yeah. alright, so what I'm going to do is take that out. Let that here really, really well. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp a little something on there. Got this tiny, tiny little bird. And the other thing I did not do was uh, distress that. So let me just slide that under there quickly and just ink that up a little bit on the edges. I should have did that first, guys, but this is where it's all a learning curve. Getting back into the swing of um, doing everything on camera. Alright, so I've got that uh, got that little bird. Let me just make sure. Yep. And I should have stamped him first as well, but that's okay. Happy mistakes, aren't they? Okay, so that is coming together good. Let's see, I gotta put that on there because I'm not sure if that's gonna bleed. Let me see where we are. So the next thing we want to do, I'm going to not bother that until that's dried completely. So we need to do a tag for this. Let me go ahead. So I'm going to say about two and three quarter four and a quarter. Let me see if I've got one cut already. Let's see if this tag will work. It's probably too big.
Oh, actually, that works fine because I'm. I don't mind that that that's gonna peek out of the journal. I think that's actually going to be quite cute. I'll just make sure I ink that back. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's good. That's a. Uh, that's not the tip. No, I've got another set of file tags. But if you don't have tags, just cut one and make it yourself. It's really easy to do those. So I think on the back, let me go ahead and stamp something nice there. <coughs> I've got this book belongs to. I think I'll use that stamp. That would uh, that'll work nice. Enforcement tabs I want to put. So this is the back of the tag because I know that that's going to show from the front of the journal. I think that will be nice to have that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another one to the front. And then we'll put some seam binding in that in a minute. Okay, now we need an image for that. Let me grab my... Here's all of my leftover bee things. That's a nice image. And these were the off cuts. I think those would be kind of cute to make. Yeah, I actually think I'm just going to make a tag using those instead. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. And I'm just going to tear this. some of this floral image in there as well. Uh, my bee kits are from Artie Mays and My Porch Prints. I love their bee kits and I've done numerous journals with those. Um, <clears throat> People are crazy for the bees. Okay. Mm, this is some leftover um, tea dyed paper I've got. I think I'll just use a little bit of that as well. Um, <clears throat> I 
tell you what, before I put that down, let me stamp a little bit of uh, the background stamp. Let me just get a little bit of that just here and there. Okay. And that's the tea dyed paper that was <clears throat> left over. Ink the edges of these. These are just uh, bits of scrap I had left over and I thought it'd be nice to make some tags out of it. just a little bit. Here's a little label. I wonder if I should put that. Up. Yeah, I'll add that down there. I don't know, it was just sitting on my desk. <laughs> no rhyme or reason. I just it was just sitting there saying saying, maybe you want to use me here. Okay, now let me just look. I think I'm gonna do some green seam binding. Right. Here's my bag. I keep it all in. Um, I kind of like the idea of that color because when it's closed, I think that's going to look nice. So um, it's already been crinkled. I might do a video on that. I don't know if anybody's interested in how I how I do mine, but I might do a little short video on that. So I'm just going to tie this into a little bow. And hope that it now fits inside of here. <laughs> You can't believe how many times I've had to adjust things after I've made it. Oh yes, see, it's coming along. And so now that's going to have to be, ooh, okay. It's going to have to be tucked under there just a little bit. You know what, I could have done a little bumblebee there. I should have done, eh. Oh well, oh, I like how that's looking. Okay, let's carry on so that it's going to flip out now back here. Let's just go ahead and tone that down a little bit around there. I'm going to put a couple of little pockets there quickly and then we'll figure out what we're going to do there. Here's another sheet. Um, I like the idea of that and maybe one of the, uh, th maybe those two those little pockets. So let me just cut those out. I'm going to get over here so you can see. I don't want you to feel like, oh, where's she gone? Not that you need to see me cutting, but okay, that's not going to work since those are different sizes. Okay, I'm thinking. 
thinking those are going to be what I use, but I never know until I get them cut out and then I can decide. Look at that, isn't that beautiful image? Pure honey, I love that. You know I love the bumblebees. And I've got loads of them in the garden now. I planted quite a lot of um, flowers, so they are loving it. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do two little pockets there, but I do feel like that needs something. Let me see what we've got I could put behind that. But that would be too busy, I think. Okay, I think I'm actually just going to cut some of this down to fit that. So let me, let me measure again, make sure because I want to bring that in. So I'm going to go three by four and a quarter. doing on time. Okay, we're okay. Yeah. I think that needs that. Oh, that's a shame. That one was backed. So it was already backed. I hate doing that because it's been ink, you know. It's just that ink is so expensive. that there. I'm going to put a little notch in this. I know I'll lose some of the image, which is unfortunate, but I just think they look a little bit nicer if they've got that. This is just a one inch circle punch. I use it a lot, but if it's a larger pocket, I've got, I just ordered the um, two and quarter inch and that works really good for doing this. I, I've got the dies, but oh gosh, it's a pain to pull those out just to do that. You know what I mean? So I just thought, well, let me just go ahead and order one because the circle punches are really handy. All right, I'm liking this. I think this is coming out nice. Now, having said that, I'm already wondering if I only want one pocket now because it is such a beautiful, beautiful page. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it. I think I prefer it. I, d I don't want to cover that up, so I'm going to leave that. So now, <clears throat> I've got to decide what to do over here, and I've already decided. I'm going to save that pocket because we can use that elsewhere. I've already decided here I'm going to do a long pocket with an opening like that. So let's just go four and a quarter. By one and a half. Four and a quarter by one and a half. Okay. Okay, what I think I'm going to do, because <clears throat> I like the idea of the tea dyed, but I want the sturdiness of cardstock. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the machine <clears throat> and stitch that, and then I'll be back. Okay, guys, I ended up, 
I just notched that out slightly with that punch and then I just stitched along it to make that stand out a little bit more and I'm going to adhere that down and then we'll have another little My machine and I, we go round and round. Look at that. It just, uh, I'm still struggling with the tension on that, guys. And I have done everything I know to do. I, it's probably just, uh, it, it is the low, well, it's, it's the entry level machine. But it's done me well. I've had it for two years now, and I cannot complain. Um, so it's just I, I, I want a few more decorative stitches. Okay, guys. So now we've got a place for a tag here and another little journal card. Let's just go ahead and make a... Well, I tell you what, I've got... I'm just going to go ahead and cut that journal card out. We'll have that there, and then I'll look and see what kind of little tag I've got for that pocket. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I am very, very happy with my machine. It's been a great, because I, I do tend to put my machines through a lot. <laughs> Um, and that thing has been wonderful. It is a Singer tradition. Like I said, it's it's entry level, but it's served me very well. Okay, so we've got a little journal card there. wanting to catch on that other piece. Let me see if I can stretch this out just a little bit here. Yep, there we go. So now I'll just get a little tag to go in that. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna ink that. I'm gonna stamp a little B on it. And we'll put some linen thread on it and then that <coughs> we'll call that complete, I think. Unless I find something else. You know, we'll go through it <coughs> at the end. Because I may still add a few more things. This is my little, um, this is Blade blade Rubber Stamps, and they're in London. Uh, they, that's where I got this little bumblebee. I, Paul and I went down, gosh, it's been over a year now. We saw the Revivalist down there, and um, I did some research on what was nearby and the blade came up so that was an amazing day <clears throat> it was you know because there's we don't have that many craft shops here so that's where I picked that stamp up oh I love that little bumblebee I am addicted to all the little bee images and stamps. <laughs> My kids can't resist. And like I said, we we you know be 
before we finish, we'll come back through and decide if we want to add anything else to it. Um, what I tend to do is go th work my way through with journal, um, with pockets and tags. And then the last thing I tend to do is my fabrics and uh, fabric clusters. It's just the way um, I tend to do things. So I think we are going to call that a wrap today, guys. It took much longer than I was expecting. I thought we'd get the front and the back done, but it's just... A little that little bit there is a little bit fiddly, but that's okay. But yeah, I'm very happy with how that's come out. I think it looks nice. And now that we've got that sewn in, let's see how she's looking. Oops. Again, we'll leave the cutting this off until the end because I think this is going to end up a chunky journal. I got a feeling this is going to be a chunky one, <laughs> and we'll finish that off as well. So yeah, I like I like that poking out. I think that's really sweet. I'll sort that out. Okay, guys, that is part two. Um, stay tuned, we'll, and we'll go on to part three. Take care. Bye.